run on a six day cycle. So kids come to me once every six days and that was last year. This year they've doubled it. Now they come twice every six days and next year they're actually adding another day. So I'll see them three times in that six day cycle. So the program has been growing every year. Uh, we work with core teachers to, to plan together but also I have my own curriculum. So um, I can meet their needs for where they need extra help. I can go in and actually teach lessons in their class, co-teach with them, so a lot of different interacts with the teacher, um, but interdisciplinary projects. Uh, we also started, do you have a clicker? That's, we also started before and after school uh, Lego robotics program, so we had our first, uh, first Lego robotics team this year, and we also had kids compete in the Kidwind regional competitions, and we also have uh, mentor opportunities for we also have mentor opportunities for uh, the high school students and their robotics team are coming down working with our robotics teams as well and so in the the content that we cover in fifth grade it's renewable energy so we, we look at wind energy solar energy circuits and we also do battery storage, energy storage. So we're looking at batteries and capacitors and how are we storing that energy that's created. And uh, sixth grade, we're doing coding. So we started with Lego EV3 Robotics. It's block programming. And after we uh, students get the hang of using the programming and using the sensors, then we go just all virtual and, and they do that on scratch. So it's really a, a very good transition where some of the kids have a, a hard time looking at the coding in a very abstract sense that everything's done on a computer but when they can do it with the robots and physically see what their coding is doing uh, then when they go to doing it all virtually on the computers it's a logical next step so when they've talked about that the touch sensor actually touches something uh, in scratch there's sensors where you can say it's going to touch the border so it's, it's virtual but they still get the idea that it's, it's measuring something that it's touching uh, we also did uh, the Makey Makeys, which Makey Makeys are just uh, an interface for the keyboard so the kids can uh, then create their own interactive piece and it's, it involves more of the circuits as well too. So that's the, the circuits piece that they did at the fifth grade up in the sixth grade. Um, fifth grade, the hands-on activity, one of them we do is that wind can do work. So just to see that uh, wind can do work, we have them do benchmarking with to see how many paper clips they can lift and they they use triple beam balances to find the mass of a paper clip and then see how many paper clips they're lifting so to see more than it's just like the sail on a boat and more than just the wind energy but that there's many ways that wind can do work for us uh, they're also collecting a lot of data with that so they we wind up teaching them how to use multimeters so they're measuring the voltage they're producing measuring amps they're producing they're calculating power uh, so they can do a lot of different experiments by collecting this data and then see like which blade design is the best for their wind turbine and with, who's able to produce the most power and look at why it's producing the most power. So the, the idea of the projects, we, we talk about the fact that they are always going to be working in teams, they're not working individually. And so just to kind of develop these soft skills of communication, collaboration, creativity, and a word that was developed by First Lego Robotics is cooperation. So it's the idea that we're, we're, we're competing, but we're also cooperating with each other. So that's something we pull in as well. And this is just one of our early lessons right here. Kids using a multimeter just to measure the voltage of a battery um, and getting to, to use those. So we're, in upper grades, they're going to learn the V equals IR formula. They're actually doing that now through the hands-on activity. So when they get there, they already have a pretty good base knowledge for that. <coughs> Uh, some other things we do at the fifth grade level is they make their own generator. So we talk about how the generator works, how a motor works. So they make a very simple uh, electric motor here. Uh, they also make a doorbell buzzer. So we're showing multiple applications of uh, the circuits and magnetism. Uh, and I was actually excited on the expo floor. They had uh, one of the booths had, they made an electric guitar. So they used the idea of uh, magnetism, electricity, and said that, made the electric guitar to show the transfer of that energy and I'm thinking that's a great application for this for my class because I can see that the electromagnet is what makes the doorbell buzzer work electricity and magnetism is what enables their generator and motor to work and oh look if you're into music it, it's what enables the electric guitar to work as well so I can see that in my future next year for my students uh, 
in the wind turbine testing, we've kind of grown. At first, we just had the multimeters, uh, but if you're trying to measure power, you need multiple meters. You can't measure the amps and the volts all simultaneously unless you have multiple meters. Uh, so we, we uh, bought software from Veneer, and now they can actually track right to the tenth of a second uh, the power that they're producing. So enable them to really refine their testing even more. So again, the, the growing of the program. And the the interesting piece, or one of the interesting pieces I like about our program is uh, our the program is just pass fail. There's not grades, and so it's really the students aren't getting motivated by a grade. I can't tell you how many times before we made it pass fail, kids would say, "Well, what's my grade?" And if you said, "Well, it's an 80," they're like, "Oh, I'm happy with an 80." But in this, the the cooperation and the competition piece is how much can you do? What is your best that you can do? And so that's really striving to do that. So. Uh, and there's many different ways of doing that. So for instance, in the kid wind competition, uh, you can look at how much power did you produce, but what is your knowledge of wind energy? And this was, I had two girls that worked in this project that were staying after school, and they made their blades, they painted their blades to look like a leaf of a tree, and, they, and their, their reasoning was that they didn't want this to be visually unappealing out in the environment, and in the environment, the blades would, uh, if they were looked like tree, leaves of trees, it would blend in. So. A lot of applications and also just kind of beating down the door like hey can I come in during lunch can I come after school can I come before school on this project-based learning that this is so here's all different activities that they have you can kind of see around the room kids different turbines testing different blades so there's large blades small blades are testing the angle and so one of the things we reinforce in fourth grade the common core is to learn about uh, angles and protractors so now they're using protractors on the wind turbines to collect data at what angle is the, what's the best angle for their blades uh, and also gearing so they're they're reinforcing ratios so they might have different angles and different gear ratios and recording all that data to really document that here's what we got and why and there's not one right answer um, some of the students might have a ratio of four to one and put more power at a different angle than somebody has a ratio of 32 to one and a different angle so there are many multiple paths to the to the best power output this was two years ago at, and at GE. General Electric is one of the companies that hosts the Kidwin competition. And so the gentleman on the left, as you're looking at the picture, is Congressman Tonko. And the person on the right is Ann McEntee, uh, Vice President of GE Renewables. So to have my, and this was uh, all fourth grade students here, so to have my fourth grade students talking, and so these were their judges. Uh, speaking to a congressman and, and the vice president of GE Renewables was just a great opportunity uh, for them. And in fact, just this morning, I had four students compete at this year's competition, and they took first place at that competition. So they've been invited to the national competition in Chicago uh, at the uh, American Wind Energy Association's conference in May. So exciting opportunities for kids in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Uh, so the coding, I talked about that at sixth grade, we go from the robotics to scratch. And so it's just that logical uh, progression of programming, the programming skills. At, at sixth grade, it's also, besides just the programming, it's how do we build? So they're learning to use motors, they're learning to use gears, and again, they're transferring that energy, so, or tr transferring that knowledge and learning. So in fifth grade, when they did the wind turbines, they learned about gearing and how gearing affects their power output. Well, now they're doing gearing with the robots, and they can see how the gearing affects how the robot performs. So, uh, it could affect from their lifting capacity uh, to how fast the robot goes. So one of the things in the first LEGO robotics competition is you only have two and a half minutes to complete as many missions as you can. So uh, one of the things they find out is if you just use a direct drive motor, uh, it goes a lot slower. So if you gear it up, it can go faster. But then they also find out there's only there's a limit to how fast it can go. So then they were trying to get larger diameter wheels because at the same rotation, a larger diameter wheel, it's going to go faster and travel further. So, so many different applications of classroom learning uh, that come from that competition piece where they're, they're seeing, hey, we need to do better and how can we do, do better? So just more of the Lego Robotics uh, activities going on here. So one of the things you see on the bottom right, this is... Uh, uh, one of the students in kindergarten, we had the, the sixth grade students build robots and go down and work with the kindergarten students. And the kindergarten students actually got to make a distance time grab. So they had 12 robots 
and they made one, the first robot go one second all the way up to the 12th robot go 12 seconds. So when they're done running, we've got a perfect distance time graph and talk about like why did, why did this come out like this? So to get the kids talking uh, kindergarten level uh, about a distance time graph was pretty exciting. And again, there's more than one way to solve the problem. So this is from the first leg of robotics. One of the things is they had to pick up barrels. So uh, on the top picture on the left is a passive grabbing arm. So it just if it runs into it, it trips the lever arm, you can pick it up. Whereas the other one, they had to have a motor. Both of those designs worked, uh, but it, the kids had two completely different paths about going about it. And then on the bottom picture there, those are four different robots that the kids built to try and test out which one's going to best uh, you know, complete their missions. And in fact, so the, the one with the treaded wheels, uh, it was interesting. When we competed at uh, Rensselaer Polytech Institute, there were 12 teams that competed and every one of them were wheeled vehicles except for my students. My students had a tracked vehicle. And it was interesting because, uh, remember I told you time is a factor. There's obstacles in the middle of the course. And one of our students jokingly said, well, why don't we just drive over the obstacle? And they all kind of laughed. And then one of the students was like, well, did it say we couldn't? So then they went back to really scrutinize the rules. And nowhere in the rules did it say you couldn't drive over the obstacle. So when we went to the competition and the robot went out and headed right for an obstacle and drove up and over it, you could see everybody, because it's kind of like stadium seating, they're all looking around like, wait, is that legal? And it turns out it was legal. So in the robot competition on that day, they, they took second place out of all the teams. And again, they were, it was just an out of the box idea, thinking that the students were able to do something different. And it's, it's neat when the kids see their, like when you can see their excitement that they know they were different and they still, and they did well. Um, so one of the activities we do, we try and reinforce again, different learning, so benchmarking. So this was, uh, to get a robot using sensors to drive as close to a block as you can. And you can do that with a touch sensor, you can do it with an ultrasonic sensor, uh, and you can do it with color sensors. So just learning the different parameters to set up the use of those sensors and, uh, and reinforcing measurement, tying in the measurement to it. So when the kids hear something that, oh, well, it's five centimeters, well, what does five centimeters look like? To have that use of it in the classroom and to be able to use that. Uh, and this was at the first Lego Robotics. So this is our team. And these are two of the kids talk as the referees, because when you're done, the referees, you actually go and they go over why the score is. You can, what's interesting about it is that you can challenge the referee. So if a referee uh, says something and you disagree, as if the referee can't show you in the book where it says it's not allowed, then you can overturn the referee's decision. So before they went to this competition and the whole idea of those tracks, my kids were very confident that nowhere in here does it say you can't drive over an obstacle. So uh, they were ready to have that conversation on a professional level with the referee, but they never did. It never came up. Uh, this is the Makey Makey I talked about earlier. So um, different circuits. So the Play-Doh can conduct electricity. That they knew aluminum foil could conduct electricity. So it's just that interface that's another piece to get the kids excited um, with it. And that's my fifth and sixth grade STEM program at South Colony. Thank you.